Many times over the years I have seen in the comments section of different videos I put out, people will say, I love your work, brother, but you have to understand that Jesus is not God. Um, and I see this over and over again. Uh, people that claim to be a Christian, and yet they deny the deity of Jesus Christ. Uh, that's not possible. I'm going to prove it to you in this study today that not only is Jesus God, but God is Jesus. See, logically, if Jesus Christ is God, then God, the Father, would have to be Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you have two different gods, which is what Trinitarianism teaches. They teach God the Son, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit. You have three different God titles. And the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not the Father. Um, but yet there's still, it's three different persons, three different God titles, but it's just one God. Uh, the Trinitarian God is an idiot that can't, uh, has, you know, is challenged by basic math. All right, I'm going to show you today from the scriptures, the King James Bible, that the Bible does teach that Jesus is God and that God is Jesus. It's one and the same teaching. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. I'm going to show you here that God shed his blood to pay for sins. And if you don't believe that, if Jesus is just some kind of an angelic being or a created being or whatever else, um, then his blood didn't save you. In order for his blood to save, it has to be God's blood. It has to be perfect. right? You have to understand the system of sacrifice throughout the Bible. You want a lamb without blemish and without spot back in the Old Testament. Well, in order for your sins to be, and that was just to cover sins temporarily under the Old Testament system, which is inferior to the New Testament. In the New Testament, you have to have perfect blood to take away all of your sins and to impute righteousness to you. Okay? And if you don't believe in that, you don't understand New Testament salvation, and you are lost and yet in your sins. And by the way, let me just say this, and I'll repeat this throughout the study. I'm not interested in debating this issue. Okay, I know what the Bible teaches. I will be showing it. It's plain. It's crystal clear. No debate needed. And uh, I don't care about dialoguing with people or debating with people. If you don't agree, um, don't waste your time in the comments. Go someplace else. Um, I know all the arguments and everything else. I've been through them. I've spent years doing the work, preaching and teaching from the Word of God, answering the different questions and the different issues. If you're too lazy to study it, then I don't care to try to have a little comment battle with you. Okay, so if I see stuff that's going in, well, what about this verse? What about, no, my purpose right now in this study is to strengthen the faith of Bible-believing Christians, specifically King James Bible-believing Christians. Well, I don't agree with you on the new versions, then go someplace else. I don't agree with you that Jesus is God, then go someplace else. It's just that simple. I want to build the faith of my uh, viewers, okay? I want to encourage you in the faith, to make you stronger in the faith. That's what the purpose of this ministry is. Not to just have endless questions and strife and contention with a bunch of lost heretics online. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God. In context, God. All right, Which he, who's the he? It's reference to God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Now, the King James Bible teaches the Godhead doctrine. Three parts to one being, one person. You will, ever, you will only ever see in your King James Bible person in reference to God. You will never see three persons. Persons in the plural, every single reference, every single one of them is a reference to people. Never once reference to God. Right, you say, how do you know that? Well, because right here, chapter 17, page 70, it begins in my book, The Godhead Doctrine, and I list every single reference, say it this, do it this way, every single reference to persons in the entire King James Bible. Every single reference, right there. Okay? Every single one written out right here, available in print in my book. Proving that persons is never a reference to God. Proven. Well, you can't prove it. Yes, I can. It's right there. All right. Um, and I just want to say this. It's funny, too, because Trinitarians, they'll say that uh, God is a trinity. 
and that uh, what's man? Man is a tripartite being. Is the Trinity tripartite? Uh, no, the Trinity is three persons. Man isn't three persons. God said, let's make man in our image. And so man is a tripartite being. Man is made up of three parts, body, soul, spirit. But God is not body, soul, spirit. God is three persons. Man isn't three persons, even though man is made in the image of God after his likeness. We're not three persons, but God is three persons. We're tripartite, but God is not tripartite. Uh, God is not the author of confusion. Okay, and I have a whole study showing the Roman Catholic bishop, um, Bishop Barron or whatever the guy's name is, lost Roman Catholic, and uh, he comes out and he says that the Trinity is meant to confuse you. It's like smoke in the eyes. I have it on my channel. Look it up. Proven. Proven. But you see, how can God the Father have blood? It says right there, which he hath purchased with his own blood. How can the Father, reference right here, be the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood? It's not referring to Jesus Christ by name. Jesus Christ is who it's talking about. But Jesus Christ is God. You're, it's proven right there. Well, I don't believe it. Then you can't be saved. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. Why would somebody fight this? You believe that Jesus Christ is God. You believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sins. You get to go to heaven when you die. I have to fight against that. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me show you some more scriptures. Genesis chapter 22. Stop trying to talk me into eternal life, Denlinger. You're such a heretic. heretic. Shut up, Denlinger. Men like this should be put to death. He should be burned at the stake. Yeah, let's burn Denlinger at the stake because he's trying to tell us how to have eternal life and go to heaven when we die. Heresy! Heresy! <laughs> Jesus paid for all of our sins, according to Denlinger, according to him reading the Bible. That's heresy. We have to stop this. This man's a dangerous heretic. He wants to give us hope and joy and love and peace. Wow! Such a dangerous guy. What a dangerous cult leader here. <laughs> it's so weird. Genesis chapter 22, verses 6 through 8. Let's read a prophecy here about God shedding his blood. Okay? Genesis chapter 2, verse 20, Genesis chapter 22, verse 6. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. That's a prophecy. It's a beautiful prophecy. And again, you have Abraham representing the father, and you have Isaac rep representing the son. You say, well, see, right there, it's two separate persons. Two separate persons, standing or duh, it's proven. Yeah, but it's in type, okay? Abraham and Isaac are not God the Father and God the Son, all right? It's just symbolic. It's, it's sim showing symbolically what's going to happen in the future. But notice it says there, it's singular. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. The burnt offering comes after the blood sacrifice, by the way, too, Okay? And Jesus wasn't burned when he went to hell. I don't believe in that heresy either, which I've debunked thoroughly from the King James Bible. So you can watch those studies as well. God will provide himself a lamb. Um, God will provide for himself another lamb which he shall choose. No, God will provide himself a lamb. When did God do that? Uh Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world, John the Baptist says. He's the Lamb that was slain. Revelation chapter 5. Uh, scripture with Scripture. It's all right there. All right. Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus 26. I'll show you another good one. Leviticus 26, uh, verse 11 through 12. The Bible says here, And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. Who's the soul of the Godhead? 
the Father. Now look at this, verse 12. And I, who's the context? God the Father. I will walk among you and will be your God and ye shall be my people. God the Father will walk among the people. Did that happen? Well, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, yes, it did happen. Jesus Christ. And I'm going to show you the scriptures to prove this. But if you're not, well, you say, well, no, I don't think it happened yet or something. Um, well, it did happen. Okay? And ye shall be my people. Well, that's not completely fulfilled until you have the new covenant brought in. The New, Test new Testament was brought in with Jesus Christ. The death of the testator. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 talks about that. But the new covenant is coming yet in the future. And again, you have to understand that. A lot of people don't. I have a whole study to prove that. Oh, well, prove it to me in the comments. I'm not proving it to you in the comments. If you want to study the scriptures, you have to go and watch the studies and learn the scriptures. All right? Extremely important. But there's a prophecy right there that God would walk among the people. And you get the, the modern Talmudic Jews, and they come out and they say, oh, we don't believe that the Messiah is divine. He's just a mortal man. Well, then you're rejecting the scriptures. Just that simple. Romans chapter 1. Go to Romans chapter 1. Well, can't you just, you know, redo the sermons over and over again and just keep going through the same scriptures over and over again? Well, if you didn't hear it in the past, if you can't watch a video from the past, it doesn't cost you anything but your time, well, then why would I preach it again? Why would I write it again in the comments? Better things to do with my time. I mean, you, you have to just, let me just take a break here for a minute. You have to get to the place, Christian, where you realize the vast majority are lost. The vast majority are on that broad road which leadeth to destruction. And there isn't anything that you can do about it. Put the truth out there, but if they don't want it, okay, sorry, go on to the next one. That's hard. It's not easy. Because you want to, so you know you're right, you know what the Bible teaches, and you just want to, you know, get in there and, but uh, sometimes you just have to walk away. Romans chapter 1, beginning in verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifested, or manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him, who's the him, reference to God, verse 19, verse 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. Three in one person. That's what it's talking about. So that they are without excuse. See, that's the bad thing here. You are without excuse. You stand before God. You're not getting up there and seeing three different persons. You know, here's the floaty little bird dove. That's the Holy Spirit. He's got a body and a spirit, I guess, but no soul. And the Father, well, he's a spirit. So there's two different spirits. And then you have Jesus. He's got his own body, soul, spirit. So there's five parts to the Godhead. Man's tripartite, but God is, you know, quinpartite? Uh, no, man is three because God is three. It's just that simple. Okay? Um, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Huh. When they knew God... Past tense. Wait a second. Leviticus says that there would come a day when God will walk among the people. Here in Romans chapter 1, verse 21, it says, When they knew God, they glorified him not as God. It's speaking of a past tense event. So Leviticus is before God walked on the earth. Romans chapter 1 is after God walked on the earth. What happened between Levit Leviticus chapter 11 and Romans chapter 1? Oh, I don't know. A guy showed up on the earth named Jesus Christ. God manifest in the flesh. God the Father walking around on the earth in the person of Jesus Christ. That's exactly what happened. Well, I don't believe in such nonsense. I, I'm a Trinitarian. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Hmm. First Timothy chapter 3. First Timothy chapter 3, 
I mean, I literally put this study together this morning. Lord put it in my mind, and I thought, you know, I need to do something on that. And um, I put it together this morning, just went over some of the best scriptures. There are so many more scriptures, many of which are covered in my book, The Godhead Doctrine. You can buy it. You don't have to buy it. Whatever else. You can watch my sermons. I cover even more stuff for free on this channel. But uh, just put these together this morning. thought, well, I'll give you the best scriptures. And if you reject that, well, there's no hope for you. First, uh, Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God appeared in a physical body on the earth. He was manifest. If I say Jesus Christ in, in five seconds is going to manifest right here, what does that mean? That means that he's going to physically show up. All right? Jesus Christ is not manifesting right here. Right? Uh, there's no physical body there. So I can't say God is manifest right here in the, in the flesh. No, he isn't. But Jesus Christ, in he, when he was here on the earth, if I would have brought him into my studio here and say, here's Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh. That means you're looking at him. Okay? God was manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Um, I believe on him. You say, well, uh, that's just your opinion. Uh, no, I've experienced things. Uh, the Lord has shown me things. The Lord has been there for me. Uh, I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. A wonderful, amazing thing changed in my life. And if you think that you're going to talk me out of it through little philosophical questions and arguments, uh, you're kidding yourself. That isn't about to happen. John chapter 14. God was manifest, manifest in the flesh. All right, let me show you. So Jesus didn't claim that. Jesus didn't claim it. You're coming up with heresies, Denlinger. You're coming up with heresies. Oh, we'll see. John chapter 14 and verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. See, so we'll see, Jesus is saying that God is one and he's not God. Keep reading. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Hmm. If you have an NIV, then you get a room, by the way. You don't get a mansion. It's a little problem. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we'll see there's a separation there. Yeah, separation between body and soul. That doesn't mean that they're, the, they're not the same person, the same being. Let's continue. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Huh? Where's the father? I, I, oh, what do you mean? I don't understand. Look at the reaction. Verse 8. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the father, and it sufficeth us. They're looking at Jesus. They're saying, you know, um, henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Well, all I see is Jesus. Uh, Philip says that. Uh, Show us the Father, and it suffices. Uh, uh, where is he at? Suffice. I, I want to. I want to see this. Uh, what does Jesus res respond to Philip? Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known the Father, Philip? It doesn't say that. He says, Hast thou not known me, Philip? What's the context? The Father. Show us the Father. Have I been so long time with you, and, and yet you don't know me, Philip? He's speaking as the Father. Huh. How could that happen? Oh, I don't know. There's a soul inside of a body. Two parts right here. And a third part, my soul, or my spirit. The spirit of your mind, the Bible says. Hmm. You're looking at a tripartite being right now. And if you want to do a neat little experiment... 
go to the bathroom or wherever else you have your mirror and look into the mirror and you'll be seeing a tripartite being looking back at you. Okay? I mean, think about this for a minute. Think about the absurdity of this for one second. Somebody comes to you, let's just not say father, we'll say soul. And uh, if you've seen me, then you've seen my soul. Obviously, the soul is not some other place. And somebody comes and says, say, I don't see the soul, where is it? Well, if you're looking at me, you're looking at my soul, you're looking at my spirit. You're not, you know, there's not a body here, soul there, and spirit over here, or something. You're seeing body, soul, spirit. Spirit. I'm a tripartite being. Why? Because I'm made in God's image after his likeness. God is a tripartite being. So when Jesus Christ is walking around on the earth, I will walk among them and be their God. When they knew him, they glorified him not as God. You see what I'm saying? God manifest in the flesh. He's walking around and he's saying he's manifest. God is in the, he's there. He's the soul. He's the Holy Spirit up here. And he's manifesting himself physically in the flesh. In the person of Jesus Christ. Singular person. And if you say persons, you're a heretic. <laughs> People are such sissies. Reading verse 9 again. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Look at this. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. How much clearer could it be? Well, it's, you see, he's seeing divine essence. No, he didn't see divine essence. It's a female perfume. All right? Such a stupid thing. Where's divine essence in the scriptures? You papist, adding to the scriptures? We little Trinitarian Satanism? There's no divine essence. There's no three persons. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's no, there, that doesn't appear in the scriptures. Stop adding to the scriptures, you wicked devil. How dare you add to the scriptures and then call me a heretic because I read the scriptures and read it and interpret it as it says right in the Bible. I don't add anything to the scriptures. You do, servant of the devil. Dilly is a heretic. Dilly is a heretic. Enjoy your time in hell because that's where you're headed. I'm trying to warn you. But some of you, your heads are too thick for me to get through. There's no Holy Spirit up there to guide you. It's just your own spirit. You're dead in trespasses and sin. That's why this stuff doesn't make sense to you. Verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. The Father's dwelling in him. Yes, there's separation between Father and Son, just as there's separation between my soul and my body of flesh. My body of flesh would like to come through there, through the camera, and start punching some of you Trinitarians in the face. And my soul says, it, it, just no, no. And the spirit of my mind says, uh, no striker. Remember, brother, the qualifications for a bishop? No striker? Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, The Father dwells in Jesus. You say, but it, but it says there, you know, I am in the Father and the Father in me. How could Jesus be in the Father? It's talking about fellowship there, obviously. Okay? But he goes on to clarify it there. The Father that dwelleth in me. Oh, I, I don't believe that. Okay, then believe your stupid nonsense that you get up to heaven and there's old man father over there with his big long flowing white beard and there's son Jesus over there sitting in his right hand in a little lawn chair or something and the Holy Spirit's flying around you know looking for a cracker okay Polly want a cracker Polly want a cracker or whatever doves eat you know maybe a little uh, piece of bread or something like that you know maybe a Michael the Archangel's up there ripping up bread and throwing it out there for the Holy Spirit dove to come and land and pick it up and eat it and, and I believe this stupid stuff I'm the heretic I don't think so. You say, well, that's blasphemy. How? Why? Where does the scripture not say this stuff? How do you know that the Holy Spirit's up there not flying around looking for a piece of bread? I mean, you add that whole thing to the scriptures. Holy Spirit's not a dove. He appeared in a bodily form and floated down like a dove. 
Okay, runs like the wind. That doesn't make him the wind. You say that about somebody. That thing's as fast as lightning. It's like a bolt of lightning going by. It doesn't mean it's lightning. Okay, when it says the Holy Spirit descended like a dove, it doesn't mean he was a dove. Unless you believe in some kind of weird bestiality thing that the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, you know, overshadowed Mary and that they, you know, Jesus is produced as a result. So I guess it, according to some of the Trinitarian devils out there, it was bestiality. A bird with a woman and produced a child. Well, that's a problem. It's not what the Holy, or the Holy Scriptures teach or the Holy Spirit would reveal to you. Yeah, I get, I get sick and tired of these Trinitarian devils coming out and pretending that they're orthodox somehow and that we're the Holy Brethren and I, I can't talk to Denlinger because he's a crazy nut. Yeah, I just call it, I'll stand by the scriptures. You stand by your traditions. You overthrow the scriptures. You make the word of God of none effect by your traditions, which ye have delivered. May the Lord rebuke all you wicked Trinitarians out there. I have to continue teaching Trinitarianism. Otherwise, people might think I'm weird too. <laughs> Sissy. First John chapter 3. Let's get a couple more verses of scripture in here. Because there's plenty that prove that uh, God is Jesus and Jesus is God. First John chapter 3 verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. When was the Father on the earth? We just read it in John chapter 14. Show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Philip, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me? The world knew the Father not. That's what it's saying in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Can you deal with the scriptures? Well, I should probably run. Well, uh, I could find comfort in my, in my Trinitarian uh, thing here. Um, where's the thing at on the, on the Divine Trinity? I have to find it. I don't even think I have it bookmarked right now. But, you know, if I could just find the thing in here um, where it talks about the Trinity... I just grabbed this thing. I don't have this planned. I'm not even sure where the thing's at. But, uh, you know, let's go in here to the Catechism because that'll tell us, it'll make us feel good about ourselves and, and the Trinitarian thing is extremely important and without the Trinitarian, you know, doctrine, you're not really a true Christian. But, you know, I can't find this stupid thing. I was hoping I could just turn to it. I don't have it memorized. I memorize scripture. I don't memorize uh, traditions of men. So, I'm getting irritated here. So much junk to go through, stuff about the Eucharist and all the, yep, whatever. <laughs> That's what I think about that. Um, you don't need a stupid catechism. All you need is your King James Bible. That's what you need. What about the Greek and the Hebrew? Well, it's fine if you want to get into, you know, wasting your time, unless you're going to be dealing with Greek or Hebrew speaking people. But if you're speaking to English people, King James Bible. Tested and tried and proved for over 400 years. It's all that you need. Unless you want to prove that you're uh, your own God. Colossians chapter 2. Let's go there next. I, I, just, I think that you could do it differently. I think that you should have more love. I know all the arguments. That's why I do this stuff. That's why I make these little things and whatever. I know the arguments. I've dealt with people in person, online. All the different stuff. I get letters and, you know, thousands of letters. I'm working on finishing up my second tote over here. Big plastic tote thing of letters that I've gotten, you know, through the years. Thousands of letters. I've dealt with PhDs. I've dealt with, you know, Catholic priests. I've dealt with, you know, laymen and, and clergy and all the other things. I've dealt with them. I read their books. Oh, you're just some kind of YouTuber. <laughs> Okay, Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. What's the context? Christ, the subject. For in him, Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. 
How many times have I preached that thing through the years? I mean, do you want a clearer scripture? <laughs> Jesus Christ it has all the fullness of the Godhead bodily in him. God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ. Three parts, tripartite being. God manifest in the flesh. One God. One God, and that is it. You don't believe that? It's because you've been spoiled by philosophy. Which is exactly what the Catechism says. That was the quote I was looking up, but I can't stand here wasting your time forever now. Well, you can edit it out. I don't like to edit my videos because it, it just makes it look then like I'm a faker or whatever else and things. And I want to just make it as I would. You, you meet me on the road out here or something or meet me someplace at a store or something. Hey, brother, let's talk about this. Or let's talk about that. You're going to get the same thing that I do here on video without a lot of editing and everything else to make myself look smarter than I actually am <laughs> or, or better spoken than I actually am. 1 John chapter 2. You say, well, I think that you're an idiot. I don't think that you really understand things. Well, good for you, whatever. I don't really care about what you think of me. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20 through 25. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Say people do. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Trinitarianism is a lie. Always has been. Always will be. And it's not of the truth. You can't blend the Godhead doctrine with Trinitarianism, like Peter Ruckman tried to do. All these Ruckman commentaries up here, he tries to blend the Godhead doctrine. I learned it from him, and yet he blends it with Trinitarianism, and it doesn't work. See, Trinitarianism is far into the Scriptures. The Godhead doctrine is based on the Scriptures. Verse 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, now look at this, that denieth the Father and the Son. Two, two distinct different things there. No, it isn't. Keep reading. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. Huh. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. If you have the Father, you have the Son. If you have the Son, you have the Father. Jesus is God. God is Jesus. I'm not a heretic for saying that. You're a heretic if you don't believe that. Verse 24. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also, also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this, is the, and this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. Oh, wait. Oh, oh that's an error in the King James Bible. It must be an error. <clears throat> Ye shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that He hath promised us, even eternal life. It mentions two different things and yet says He, singular. Let us make man in our, plural, image, singular. I wonder if it's kind of the same thing here. The Father and the Son, He hath promised us. Us make man in our image. You, you know, and again, Trinitarians, uh, God didn't die on the cross to pay for your sins. God didn't shed His blood. Just one member, one person of the Trinity. The second member of the Holy Trinity. Um, that's a shame. You see, my God came to the earth and he died and he shed his precious, pure, sinless blood to pay for all of my sins. All of them. Humbled himself. It's a shame that you don't have a God like that. I feel bad for you. 2 John chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. Whosoever transgresseth, transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. The doctrine of Christ contains the Father and the Son. Hmm. 
If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. You know, I've been very gracious with Trinitarians over the years, because I realize that a lot of people, they go and they get saved and they get messed up and go to some, or I'll say it this way, they go to some church building and get messed up. They go to some seminary and get messed up. They go to listen to some little pervert or whatever else in a suit and tie or some guy wearing skinny jeans or something on YouTube and the guy gets them away from the scriptures gets them into Trinitarianism and they get messed up so I've had some grace because I care about people like that I used to say Trinity and things you know well, Trinity's not in the Bible we believe in the Trinity I used to repeat that line because I was taught it all right so I've had some grace but when it gets right down to it when you get somebody that's really a true hardcore Trinitarian um, they don't believe the doctrine there. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, what is the doctrine of Christ? Who is Jesus Christ? Well, Jesus Christ is a created being, according to the Trinitarian stuff. Well, no, he's eternally existing as God the Son. Where does the scripture say that? Where does it say that he eternally exists as God the Son? There's no term God the Son in the, in the Bible. Huh. Um, the doctrine of Christ is that God was manifest in the flesh. He came down and he walked among men. And the world didn't know him. They didn't know who he was. He's the Lord of glory. Um, you want to do a very big study? I'd like it to actually be my second book. If ever can I, I can get the time to write another book. Um, the glory of the Lord. Uh, there's a big study for you. And look at the glory of the Lord as it relates to the Father and also to the Son. And you'll realize that it's they're one and the same being. It's an amazing thing. That's the doctrine of Christ. He has the glory of God. He comes down and he dies on the cross. And when he's like this, and they hammer the nail in, bang, 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 like that, and his blood's coming out. And they're whipping him, and his blood's coming out. They put the, the crown of thorns on his head like that, and the blood comes out. Nails his other hand, nails his feet together puts the spear into his side. That blood was God's blood. You say, well, I don't agree with that. Then you are lost. You don't abide in the doctrine of Christ. You say, well, I'm a Trinitarian. I'm a proud Trinitarian. Then you're lost. You don't abide in the doctrine of Christ. You don't have the Father and the Son. You have two separate persons. That's what you have. And um, if there can come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, the doctrine of Christ, which I have been preaching to you here in this study, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. Kind of like God bless you. Would be another way to say the thing of God's speed. It's not the same thing, but it's, it's a way of saying God bless you, God's speed, God help you on your journey, whatever else. Uh, I'm not going to do that. You're a Trinitarian? Get away from me, devil. I have no time for you. You say, well, I'm just, I'm trying to get this thing figured out, this whole thing. Okay, then I have time for you. But somebody that says, I reject that. I've read the book. I've listened to his sermons and Denlinger's a heretic. Get away from me, you wicked devil. And I will not God, say God bless you or your ministry or anything else. I hope the Lord stops you, stops your lying tongue. Disgusting. But let me give you one more place in Scripture here to really nail this thing. John chapter 8. You want the best place to go to? When did Jesus ever say that he was God? When? Oh, I'll give you a good one. John chapter 8, beginning in verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Interesting, because the Bible describes the soul, God the Father, as the light which no man can approach unto, which no man hath seen nor can see. But then it's the glory of God. They see the light, and it's the glory of God. And it says the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Huh. Jesus Christ goes on to, on to the Mount of Transfiguration. He's transfigured before them, and it's a bright light. 
above the brightness of the sun. John, in the book of Revelation, sees Jesus Christ, and it's a bright light. Hail the sun of righteousness. Jesus is compared to the sun, the sunlight. And so you get the dippy little uh, uh, little atheist dork. Uh, what was his name? Uh, the guy that came out with the... Um, can't think of the name of it. I really don't try to remember these guys' names because they're just losers. The fool has said in his heart there's no God. Um, oh, I can't think of the name of that big film. It was a real big one and people, you know, just, I stopped believing in God after I saw that. But, you know, he came out and he was saying that Jesus is just another, you know, he's just a sun God and all this other stuff. <laughs> it's stupid. Because it's in the, in the Bible, it's, you know, it says, calls him the son of righteousness, and there are similarities between Jesus and the son and things. It's called typology, biblical typology. You know, and there are ancient pagan religions that, you know, worship the son, and then it was kind of, you know, they had similar characteristics to Jesus Christ, so it's all just son worship. Uh, yeah, it's called similarity typology, you know, people copying, making counterfeits of Jesus Christ, you know. Atheists don't understand a lot of things. But um, <clears throat> let's continue here. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Just like a lot of Trinitarians say about the Godhead doctrine. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true, for I know whence I came and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. Ye judge after the flesh. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 11 through 12. I will walk among them. Romans chapter 1. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Therefore the world knoweth him not, the Father, because it knew, you know, uh, knew Jesus not or whatever else. I'm trying to think of the verse there in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Knew him not because it knew, ah, getting all mixed up. The whole point is, you go back and look at the verse, okay, I'm getting the wording mixed up. But what we've been reading is that when Jesus Christ walked on the earth, they didn't know who he was. They didn't truly understand. They're saying, uh, you're lying, you're a liar, you're, you know, bearing false witness here. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man, Jesus says back to them. They're looking at Jesus and they're saying, this guy, he's not even attractive. Isaiah 53 says that there's no, you know, he's not to be desired. He's no beauty or whatever else. He's not a good-looking guy when he's walking around on the earth. And they're looking and they're saying, he's a carpenter. This guy, God manifest in the flesh, are you kidding me? He doesn't wear the best clothes. He's homeless. I saw him sleeping out there along the road the other night. Him? <laughs> that guy? <laughs> they were judging after the flesh. Kind of an interesting thing because Trinitarians judge Jesus after the flesh. They judge God after the flesh. Let me say it that way. Oh, he's the second member of the Trinity. Oh, he's not as high up as the Father. Well, he's he's a created being, and he's not really God manifest in the flesh. And, and again, there's different varieties of Trinitarianism. I know that. Whatever. Well, we believe that he's God manifest in the flesh. Uh, you know, without going into a huge big issue with some of these people. Verse 16. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. Oh, he's talking about his Father up in heaven. Uh, Jesus, I guess, had a cell phone or something. He could just call him when he needed to. Or it could actually be that the Father's inside Jesus, like the Bible teaches. So the soul responds to the body. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. Say two separate men. Keep reading. Um, I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. They said on they then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Just like Philip said, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. How? When was the Father? When? Show me. All you Trinitarians out there that say that Jesus and the Father are two separate persons, okay? Show me one place in the Gospels where there were two beings walking around, two persons walking around on the earth together. 
Jesus and the Father walking around holding hands or something, you know. Show it to me. How could Jesus Christ claim that you, if you've known me, you've known the Father? Where? Where's the Father at? Show me the two separate persons. Jesus is speaking about it all being inside of him. If you can't get it, I mean, I don't know what else to say. You're lost. I just don't get it. Verse 20, these words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hours his hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. Look at verse 24. The greatest single kick against Trinitarianism in the entire Bible. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he. Who is he talking about? God the Father. Ye shall die in your sins. Could it be any clearer? Well, no, brother. He's talking about Jesus. If you believe not that I am he, meaning myself. No, he's talking about the Father. Look at the context. Go up there. Verse uh, 19. They're saying, where is thy father? Jesus is going down through and explains it. And he says, if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. If any man have not the son, say not not the father. And that's where I'm going to end the study. Um, I could keep going over this thing and over this thing, but you know what? Um, I'm convinced that the time is going to come when God will send the famine in the land, um, not a thirst of water or you know hunger for bread, basically, back in Amos chapter 8, but um, out of hearing the words of the Lord. And I'm getting this thing of there are some really dear brethren that I've met on this ministry over the years, some people who have been very faithful in their support, some people who have been uh, good friends that have sent us really neat things, and, and uh, people send us gifts and things that they make with their hands, and, and we get sick and people will send us natural health cure type of stuff, and I mean, it's dear people, I love you, and I can't wait to spend eternity with you. Um, beautiful comments, wonderful things, good times of fellowship and whatever else. Some of you I've gotten to speak with, you know, in person, some of you I've gotten to speak with through Skype or some other means or whatever else. Praise the Lord. Thank you. <laughs> I love you very much in the Lord. But a lot of you people out there, most of my subscribers are swine. Just to be very plain, um, they watch this video because there's devils in them and they get all enamored and all, oh, I have to get up, you know, they're obsessed and they have to see what I'm doing and saying and, oh, he's going, is he going to mention me? Oh, you know, and they get all this weird. And casting my pearls before swine I, uh, I mean, how do I not do that? Okay, uh, on YouTube, on the internet, it's impossible. And I'll tell you right now, you say, well, you should have a church building. Um, it's impossible in church buildings. I've been in church buildings, and they're filled with lost people. Save people, you'll meet some in there, but a lot of them are lost. Plain and simple. And they'll do things that just blow your mind. I mean, I've been through all the different controversy stuff, and... Where's brother so-and-so at? What happened? In, oh, well, you know, he ran off, you know, with another woman, or he's, you know, he was caught with a guy or something. And you, what? <laughs> I've been through all that stuff. Um, but the time is going to come, and I do believe that it could be before the catching up of the body of Christ. Don't know the exact timing, but I think the time will come when the Lord's just going to say, okay... It's not going to be YouTube that takes me down. It'll be the Lord. It just simply says, that's enough. And uh, he only knows when that time is. He's the one that gets to, to determine that. Um, what more can I say? Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. I really don't understand. You know, I read different times when the Lord, he's here on the earth and he marvels at their unbelief. 
you know, he's there. People being brought up to him, here's a blind guy. Been blind ever since he was born. And the Lord says, be healed. He touches his eyes. I can see. I can see. And he's running around. I can see. Oh, you know, everything. Here's a guy who's maimed. You know, he's missing an arm like this. And the Lord says, be healed. And out comes the arm. I mean, show me a faith healer that could do that. You'll never see it. Um, people with all manners of, of diseases and somebody's possessed with devils and the Lord's just healing people, casting devils out, doing this, causing the sea to be calm. And, and it, just down here, just showing, hey, I'm God. I'm God, you know, do you want to believe in me? Crucify him, crucify him. He's trying to make himself to be God. <laughs> what more do I have to do? Pharisees coming to him and they're saying, tell us plainly whether thou be the Christ. What do you think I've been just doing for three and a half years? Huh? All right, I'll say it one more time. You know, you'll see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power. I'm, I am God manifest in the flesh. What manner of blasphemy is this? You've heard it from his own mouth. He's worthy of death. <laughs> I don't understand. Right here in this window, fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. Uh, KingJamesVideoMinistries.com. It's a big Bible open. Okay? Let's see if I can show that. Right there, you can see the back part of it. Okay? I mean, there we go. A little close to being what it was. I can show you how to be saved, how to go to heaven when you die. Who wants it? Crazy nut. That guy's weird. Look at him. I marvel. I absolutely marvel. And I marvel at people that reject that Jesus Christ is God. That have to believe in this Trinitarian stuff. I don't understand you. I really don't understand. I wrote this book to be a thin little book. There goes that. I wrote this book to be a, a thin little book so people could just, you know, it's not some huge big theological treatise. You can get it. It's I tried to keep the cost down as much as I could. I have a book that you can read offline. You can give it to people. I have sermons, videos. I'm going to try to put all these different scriptures. I mean, right here it is. Right now, scriptures. Right there they are. You can copy those down. I mean, I've done everything I could to try to explain to people that Jesus Christ is God. You can rely on him for salvation. I mean, that's what the whole thing is about. If Jesus Christ is not God, if he's a created being, well, you can't really trust him completely because there's somebody above him. But the Bible teaches, the King James Bible teaches, that he is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. There's nobody higher than Jesus Christ in heaven. No one. When he says, my father is greater than I, he's talking about the soul being greater than the body. My soul is greater than my body. Well, I can watch, I watched the whole thing. I watched the whole sermon. I still don't agree with you. Time will come, and I don't know when it will be, but I believe firmly that the time will come when the Lord will just say, okay, put his hand over my mouth and just say, do something else. And, uh, you know, and I get these people commenting, you know, and things, and must be nice to have all the donations. Do you realize how little I make compared to what I should be making? Leaving the art world and, and things. The Lord says, okay, you've done your part, Brian. Uh, go on back. Go do the art thing again and whatever else. If that eventually happens before the catching up of the body of Christ. Oh, Okay. I'll go back to actually making good money again. I mean, you know, we were talking about this the other day, and I mean, I have almost 65,000 subscribers now, which is great. Thank you to everybody out there for subscribing. But uh, it's probably less than, well, not probably, it's way less than 1% that, that uh, donates to this ministry. Now, if I had a store, just speaking from a business perspective here, ministry isn't business, but bear with me. If I had a store and I got 65,000 people coming into the store on a weekly basis will say, and less than 1% were buying something, um, 
You can't run a business like that. Uh, but I run this ministry like that. Uh, very few people actually donate to this ministry. Why do I continue then? Um, it's called charity. It's called sacrifice for the Lord. That's what it's called. I had big plans for the ministry. To be very frank with you, I had very big plans for this ministry many years ago. And I've pretty much given up on most of those plans. Because the uh, body of Christ is just not there to uh, push these things forward. I, I do what I can. But I mean, I'm spending seven days a week most weeks. I get a day off now and then, you know. Uh, we go shopping or something, so I have a few hours off when I go shopping or have to do work at the property or something. But uh, the time's going to come when I feel the Lord will just say, okay, that's enough. I mean, how? what more can I do? What more can I say? Here are the scriptures to prove that Jesus Christ is God and that God is Jesus Christ. I'm not convinced. Okay. Um... Thank you to all the people that do support this ministry, um, whether with your prayers or with uh, donations and things. We appreciate that. That's kept us going over the years. And um, I really appreciate it more than you know. And uh, but that'll be it. I'm going to stop now and, and I have to edit and render this study, get this thing uploaded. I have some other walk and talk type of stuff to do and whatever else. Um, but... I can see the finish line out ahead. Um, I've done my best to keep the faith and um, to stand up for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, I'll show you one other thing here. See, I'm actually a superhero. See, one of my big stands that I've had to take over the years is uh, against this pagan teaching. And I have my old T-shirt on underneath this one. No Trinity. You can't really see the bottom part of this, but it says no, no Jesus. Um, there is no Trinity in Scripture. I have the picture of the Father, Son, and the little birdie, and I have a big red X through it. I can't really see it too good anymore. It's starting to fade pretty bad. But uh, there is no Trinity. And if you believe in that, well, you're believing in a false Christ. It's just that simple. And there will be a Trinity. That is true. There will be a Trinity in the future. Uh... Antichrist, false prophet, and the dragon, Satan. Three separate persons, but all claiming to be the same God, apparently, I guess. So that will be it. And uh, please, um, I don't want any arguing in the comments. And well, what about this? What about that? I'm just going to start to delete comments on things like this. I don't have time. I want to encourage those of you that are saved, that are new in the faith, Jesus Christ is God. God was manifest in the flesh. He came down and he took your sins on himself. He died on the cross. God shed his precious, pure, supernatural blood. That's what it was. Where does it say supernatural blood? Okay. <laughs> Where does it say uh, that it doesn't say supernatural blood, but was it supernatural? Yes, obviously. All right. So, hopefully you understand what I'm saying with this whole study. Um, meant to encourage people. Um, so, that will be it. And we will see you in upcoming studies. Thank you for watching.